Hello everyone, Jared here, and in today's video, I wanted to learn more about these soapstone pieces of art that I've been finding in marketplaces all across Kenya. Because of all the different types of things you'll find inside of gift shops, whether it's in Nairobi or on the eastern coast in Mombasa, you'll find pretty much any store that sells to tourists has at least a small amount of soapstone works for sale. As such, I've been invited to someone's home in Nairobi to learn more about it. So here I am, another day in Nairobi, and here I am with James, who's going to be teaching me how to do... What exactly? Soapstone. Soapstone. Uh, to learn about soapstone, carving, and the extraction process and all that. All right, so let's go ahead and see what that's all about. James here has been crafting and painting with soapstone since 2012 although he really started working with it when he was just 12 years old and learned how to do it from his father. Because you see, James is one of the Kisi people, an ethnic group that exists in the southwest region of Kenya that you can see on the map here. And it's from this specific area that all the soapstone you find across Kenya originates. And because of his first-hand account experience working with this soapstone material, he had a lot of pictures to show me of what it was like extracting the soapstone from the mines, collecting it, breaking it apart, shaping it, transporting it, and more. He also had pictures of what it looked like in the village, around the mining area, where he grew up. After this brief introduction, James showed me some of the finished products, after they'd already been sanded down into the smooth forms that you see here. Today specifically, we'd be working with soapstone bowls, as these were the soapstone shapes that he started out with back when he was young. But before I got to do my own, James provided a little demonstration of his own.
So here is the finished prototype. And next will be the real one. Ready for sale. All right. Here yeah. we are. Perfect. And here the two are, side by side. They turned out a lot better than I could have ever hoped for, and it definitely wouldn't have been possible for me to do this without James helping me along the way. Look him up on Airbnb Experiences in Nairobi if you're interested in doing the same thing. While we were finishing up, James's wife had just finished cooking some chapati, as well as some beans and rice to fill us up before what we'd be doing next. And now we're going to be heading over to a Maasai market. 
in CBD. In CBD, Central Business District. So see you there. The reason that we're heading to a Maasai market is because this is one of the types of places where James goes multiple times throughout the week to sell his soapstone works. And these can take place anywhere across the city. I have just arrived at the Maasai market and now I'm gonna check it out. Visiting a Maasai market is a must if you come to Kenya. Now, when you hear the word Maasai, you're probably instantly thinking about the most famous tribe. And while it's true that a lot of the goods that you'll find on sale here are made by people of the Maasai tribe, it's really an open tourist market of which people from all various backgrounds across Kenya come together to sell their things. Most of which are, again, geared towards tourists. It's especially important for you to know that if you happen to ever come to one of these marketplaces, you need to learn how to bargain, because bargaining is a skill you will most certainly need in order to get the goods here at a decent price. And if you're someone who doesn't look like a local, such as myself, you're going to have a harder time to do this simply because they know that as a foreigner, you're probably someone who's able to afford their goods at a higher price than the locals would ever consider buying them at. There are so many different varieties of clothes, utensils, bags, artwork, you name it. Whatever it is you want for your home or to buy as a gift for others back in your home country, you can probably find here. However, before you consider buying anything, make sure to walk all the way around all the various stalls first, asking about the prices before going back to the ones that really catch your eye so that you can bargain them down to a better price. It was a pretty good thing for me in this instance that I had James with me, as well as his wife. So thank you to both of you for showing me around the market here and also for having me in your house and giving me the food and teaching me how to do the soapstones. That's going to be it for this video and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to telling you more about my experiences traveling around Africa. See you next time.